I'm Matt Gunn from House.com, and I'm here uh, with Scott Seward from Burton. What's your, what's your official title again? My title is Senior Design Engineer, and most specifically, I'm responsible for the development of our snowboards. And you do the best job in the world at it. Thank you, I try. <laughs> you will. So at the end of the day, this is kind of like tour number two. Um, we're going to walk through, Craig Scott's going to walk us through the process. We're going to see some things that a lot of people haven't seen, and we're not going to see some things that you shouldn't see. So we're good. Scott, thanks so much, man. Absolutely, dude. All right, let's do this. Where are we at right now? We're in the break room of Craig's right now. We're about to step outside into the Craig's prototype facility. Uh, Craig's was named after Craig Kelly, of course, um, one of our well-known team riders who unfortunately passed away. Um, and this building is basically uh, an homage to Craig and all that he's done for the sport, all that he's done for our brand. Uh, and you know, by naming the building after him, it reminds us uh, to kind of pursue innovation and, and, and all the rad stuff that makes us enjoy snowboarding. So it's a, just a really cool tribute to Craig. All right, so we just walked into our parts room. So this is the parts department. We've got warehousing of materials behind us here. There's some old historical cores that we still pull out from time to time for reference. Plastics, fiberglasses. There's some base material stuff stocked here. Um, and then, most importantly for this room, is wood core. Um, so we are now making all of our wood core here in-house for Craig's production. Um, all of our factories handle a little bit differently, but here at Craig's, we now have the ability to make all of our wood cores in-house. Um, what that does for us is it keeps the design and it keeps the production close to home, so we can make really quick changes on design, for strength, for flexibility, uh, and for ride. So we're building all of our cores that get, you know, for boards that are produced in-house here at Craig's, we're making all the core here as well. Um, and this is where our core development happens. So this is, for example, this is our Dragonfly core. So this is what you would find in your Custom X. Um, and, you know, it's cool. There's a lot of design elements that go into the core that the customer never really gets a chance to see. So this kind of gives you a, a sense of all the development that goes into, you know, the selection of the wood species, the orientation of the grain. Um, there's a lot of engineering, a lot of design that goes into the core. And, um, you know, the consumer never gets a chance to see that. Actually, if the consumer does see that, then I probably did my job wrong because you're looking at the inside of your snowboard. So <laughs> we'll try to avoid that. One of the coolest things that's come out of being able to make our own cores here is the innovation. Um, we are now producing some cores in-house. So these are some prototype cores that you're seeing here. Um, but we're actually we're, we're building composites into the wood core of our snowboard. So not only the composites you know, laminating the top and bottom of the core, but we're actually laminating composites into our core. Um, and what that does is give that board a really, really snappy, really energetic ride. You're going to find that kind of innovation on like our mystery level snowboard. So some high end, really, really, you know, it, it's just, it's an amazing ride. The energy that that brings to the board is just incredible. So yeah, this is where we actually give the profile to the core. This is a large uh, CNC sander. So basically there's a big sanding belt inside this machine. And depending on how we've spec'd out the profile of the board, that sander that sander drum will actually rise and fall to give the, the core its profile. So you can Got see it. this is a fish. Got it. Um, so this is the outline of a fish, and this is the profile given to the fish. Um, so the board goes in at full thickness, you know, eight or ten millimeters thick, and that machine gives it that nice profile that really determines how the board rides. So much of a board's ride comes down to where the board is thick and where it's thin and how that transition happens. Um, and as you mentioned, Matt, that's where our squeeze box technology comes in, sure. really highlighting that flex outside the feet and giving a really nice soft flex underneath the foot, concentrates that snap, concentrates that, that pop that you get from the board and lets you bounce off of that, uh, that stiffer platform outside the foot. Yo, Scott, what is squeeze box and how does it make a snowboard ride? Squeezebox is a funny name for our uh, core profiling technology. So, really, the, pro the profile of the core is what gives a lot of personality to the board. Uh, where the board is thin, where it's thick, that determines where it's soft and where it's stiff. And where that transition happens, where those stiff locations are, plays a huge role in how the board performs. Um, so Squeezebox is uh, the thinning of the profile underneath the stance. So this is where you'd be mounting your binding. A nice thin profile underneath the stance concentrates the flex of the board underneath your binding. And by use of our reflex bindings and our EST bindings, we really allow that flex to happen. There's no longer a dead spot underneath the foot. 
So thinning out the board, allowing that flex to happen underneath the foot, and then providing a stiffer section. You can really see how that profile ramps up outside the binding. That's where you're getting that pop and that snap. So think of a skateboard. All the movement, all the action happens underneath your foot, and you're popping off the tail of the board immediately behind your foot. Uh, more traditional snowboard profile stays thick through the binding and then ramps down after the binding. And we've kind of broken that rule by flexing underneath the binding and giving you that platform to pop off of outside of the binding. Scott, fiberglass plays a big role in making snowboards react the way they do. Most boards either have biax or triax glass with some carbon or some other kind of overlays. What do those kind of different glasses do to the reaction and the feel of a snowboard? Absolutely. So your first designation is exactly what you said, biax versus triax, and that means two axes versus three axes. So a biax glass has fibers running in the zero degree, tip to tail, and then in the 90 degree, so edge to edge. Uh, and biax boards provide a lot of torsional softness, so a lot of foot steer, a lot of forgiveness, a lot of uh, you know, soft playfulness. Um, your triax boards have fibers running in that twist angle, in that, if we look at this, this is a 45 degree triaxial fabric, so you see those fibers running at 45 degrees to each other. That provides a lot of torsional rigidity, so that gives a board a lot of uh, pop and a lot of spring as you roll from edge to edge. Um, so that's our, our, basically our standard triaxial fabric, so you'll see that on a lot of boards in our line, uh, like the Talent Scout, the, the Process. Um, once you get up a little bit in price point, we take that, that concept of triax glass and we actually start building uh, different triaxes using different materials. So this is a really uh, thin plus minus 45 degree glass and we can combine that with a zero degree fiberglass or we can combine it with a zero degree carbon fiber. So this is a construction that you'll see on the base of your custom and your custom X, whereas we'll have a zero degree carbon fiber giving it a lot of strength and a lot of spring uh, and helping us reduce weight, and we'll combine that with a really thin um, plus minus 45 to give it that torsional, that torsional pop and that torsional, rigidity is a bad word, but uh, that torsional energy. And then we can get even higher in fabrics, and we use, um, we use them some pretty trick little veils, and this has you know a supplemental carbon fiber running in the 45 degrees. Again, this is in your custom X, and this is giving the board energy and snap and pop as you roll edge to edge. And then if we really want to get tricked on our mystery level stuff, um, we have some pre-cured glasses um, that are specifically designed to enhance the, the strength and the performance of that board. Uh, so this is the composite that we're using on our mystery level boards, and this is really what allows us to get um, super, super lightweight. Uh, it's a specifically designed material. You can see the carbon elements in there. Um, and this material is what you'll find on our mystery level boards. Um, some really pretty trick stuff and really allows us to lighten up those boards, but still provide all the strength that you need and all the energy. If you've ever ridden those boards, they ride amazingly well. <laughs> the, the snap and the power combined with the lightweight, it's just, it's an incredible ride. So once we have our wood core chosen, once we have our plastics and we're ready to go out and build, we walk out here onto the factory floor again. Here at our build station is uh, where all that comes together to make a snowboard. So the very first thing that happens is a mold goes down. We'll have our either centered or extruded base. Edge gets bent to wrap around it. And that's really the basis of the snowboard. From there, we start building up with fiberglass, with wood core, again, fiberglass on top, and then our plastic top sheet as a graphic carrier as the last step, building up that sandwich construction that, that makes a snowboard. This is where all the parts get put into the snowboard. Once we have that whole bundle together, we'll walk around here and throw it in the press. So these presses are what give the board its shape and also kick off the curing process of the glue. So if you take a look underneath, you'll see how we adjust for different rocker or camber shapes. All those adjusters can be adjusted um, to give you different bends, different shapes. We can account for convexity or concavity, um, fully adjustable. So once all those materials are put together at the build, build station, that whole envelope goes right inside the press here. We close her up. 
and then the cycle starts. You'll see the press close, airbag inflate, and then we'll start cycling heated water through there to kick off the curing process. So we do have a lot of presses that you know, we try to recycle since we're in a prototyping scenario here at Craig's. So all of these presses along the wall are, are ones that we've built up for, yep, that's a good one, Hawk and Air 5.6. So these are all cavities that we've built up over the years, and anytime we go to make a new board or a new prototype, um, you know, the guys here will strip all the parts off, refabricate, remake, and, uh, you know, get these to serve the purpose for a new shape. Um, at the factory, there is a dedicated press for every single board so that any time we're going to make that board, it's going to come out exactly the way that you think it's going to ride. Um, but here, we've got to be a little more flexible because everything's one-off. And do you have a, do you have a favorite shape? Huh. Uh, yeah, my favorite shape is whatever I'm working on next. Um, but I, I do have a couple favorites from, you know, from seasons past. Um, I th you know, if I got to think back to boards that I've worked on over my time here, the few that come out in mind of like that I really feel passionate about were the Juice Wagon from the first generation of family tree boards. Uh, that board was really like my ride style incarnated. Uh, I guess you could call me a little selfish for designing that board because it's my ride style. But uh, no, that was a fun one. I got to work with Stefan Maurer on designing that board, and um, Stefan was just was great to work on developing. And it was, uh, yeah, it just the way the board came out and rode was just phenomenal. And then more recent boards, I mean, I'm really, really digging the, the Skeleton Key and Flight Attendant are probably my two favorite shapes that we've got going right now. Um, and then there's some stuff coming out next year that kind of fits that bill that I think people will be excited about. So I'm ex really stoked to see that come out next year. Uh, we're starting to walk into, like, our graphic prototyping side of, of, uh, of the shop here. Um, Let's take a walk through here. We'll just kind of swing around. So for graphic prototyping and even small run production, we've got um, you know basic inkjet printers here, printing top sheets, printing graphics. Say hello to Bridget and Jacob. Um, sublimation, we can do uh, sublimation for graphics. So print out our medium using a lot of heat, a lot of pressure. Um, we've got a drag knife table set up where we can do die cut bases um, and we'll you know, use the drag knife for some material cutting. And then we do have full screen printing zone over here, so spray booth for specific like spray paint applications, full silk screening table. Um, so really we've got full production graphic capabilities here in house. Um, helps us support team riders. If team riders need a deck built like tomorrow, we can accommodate that. If you know Danny's going to fly out to, we're you know it's, Oct or it's early October right now, so if Danny wants to fly out to New Zealand to catch the last bit of snow in New Zealand, and he needed a deck, we could turn it out tomorrow. We actually just did that yesterday. Um, <laughs> you know, if our riders are looking to go travel somewhere and they need stuff, we can accommodate them. We can produce the graphics here and we can get a board out to our team riders so they can go compete or they can go film or they can get on snow when snow is flying. Um, and then small production runs. We will do some small production runs out of this facility to support our you know, direct-to-consumer business, our e-commerce business. We'll do some wholesale out of here. Um, and we'll do some really targeted launches of some small run stuff out of here. So it really is, you know, it's a dedicated prototype facility, but we do supplement that with some production when, you know, when the need arises. Um, it's really, really pretty rad to work with. There's about half a dozen people that work on the board side of things over here. Uh, really, really talented builders, graphic production, machinists. Um, and it's just a blast to be able to, you know, conceive of these ideas if we need to or if we want to, you know, if, if I come into work in the morning and we've got, we've got an idea for a, a board shape or new material, um, in about a day we can turn around a board in here and we can get it on snow the next morning and that just really, really drives that innovation cycle of new ideas, getting them built, getting them tested, failing a couple times hopefully, and then, you know, by the time we failed and failed and failed, by the time we're succeeding it's ready to go to production and then, you know, hopefully it holds up to people's expectations when it lands on snow. What is one of the biggest challenges that you face as a board designer 
with the opportunities you have to create a lot of a lot of boards here. There's not very many engineers that have the, the a facility like this, but I'm sure you kind of come into some challenges. What mm. are some of those challenges that you face, and what do you do to overcome those challenges? Whew. That is an excellent question. Um, so, I think one of the biggest th one of the biggest challenges is that snowboarding is still a small industry. There are there are very few. Uh, factories producing snowboards. There are still very few factories, um, you know, producing skis. The industry has has kind of shrunk. There's some there's some big factories that are making boards for a lot of brands. So even as the pool of brands keeps expanding, um, the number of factories doesn't. So what I'm trying to get to is that um, the manufacturing solutions are 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 some of the hardest uh, things to to kind of conceive. The ideas and the concepts for a new board or a new ride or a new uh, product, um, those are always coming up. There's always people with problems. There's always team riders saying, hey, I wish my board could do this, or customers saying, you know, it would really be great if this board did this. Um, but making that step from being able to build a prototype to actually getting it into production and making, um, you know, a few thousand of them, uh, that is a really big hurdle. Like this facility here, the guys that work in this the guys and ladies that work in this facility here, we can make just about anything once. It's really, really difficult to make it a thousand times or ten thousand times. Um, so that's one of, that's one of the big challenges. Um, but it's also one of the really fun things about doing what we do. Like I said, the the ideas are endless. They're coming in from all different directions. They're coming from you know my engineering team. They're coming from you know, the, the guys that are here building boards and doing our graphic production, the machinists, and they're coming from team riders, they're coming from customers, they're coming from, you know, everyone has ideas because everyone's so passionate about this sport. Um, and it's a really fun challenge trying to make those ideas come to life. So it's a challenge, but it's also one of the fun things about this job. What is, uh, what really gets you most excited about snowboarding? What's the, what's the thing that really gets you amped hmm. in snowboarding right now? I think the biggest thing that gets me excited, and it's been like this for a few years now, is is the evolution in shape. Um, you know, personally, I like to think that we kicked it off with a family tree series, dating back five, six years ago. Um, but that that excitement for new and different shapes, and and how small changes to a shape, how small changes to a nose and tail shape, or small changes to side cut and running length, and how all those geometries match up together, um, how that can make a discernible difference in how a board rides. Um, like I, I am still amazed that you know I can go and, and make a new board and sometimes be blown away by how different it rides. Even with small changes, there can be a big difference in how the board rides, and I think that excites me because it means that uh, you know there's always going to be new things coming and there's always going to be new and exciting stuff to design and then get on snow and ride. Oh, awesome, Scott. Seriously, thank you so much for out. That was a pleasure. Tour. Absolutely, yeah, for sure. This is uh, one of the best guys in the biz. That is like at the pinnacle of what he does. He's a true professional, and you can see that by the products that he creates. Uh, Scott, thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you guys for watching. Uh, leave a comment or a question. Let me know what you think of Craig's, what you think of everything that Burton is doing with their great team and their awesome facilities. Subscribe to the channel over there. Check out more vids there, and hopefully we'll see you on snow. Peace.